Okay, we're going to expand on now on naming ionic compounds. So, uh, to watch this video, we're assuming, I'm assuming that you've watched the first one on naming ionic compounds, part one, which had just the simple ones, these, using these metals here and aluminum. The, the thing that the metals in the first two columns of the periodic table have in common and aluminum is that when they form ions, it's always the same charge. This, these group here in the first column, the alkali metals, they always form one plus ions. This group that has two valence electrons always forms two plus ions when they form ions. The transition metals don't always form the same charge. So it gives us an extra step we have to put in naming the compounds. For example, if I say, uh, write the formula for calcium chloride, uh, then that one we would say, okay, well, I know how to do that. Right, so because I've got calcium, it's in the second um, column. That means it's always two plus. Chloride, uh, the nonmetals are, are consistent. So chloride is in this column right here, always forms single minus. I would say I know the charge of those two ions and we combine them to make them neutral. I need two chlorines for every one calcium. Metal always first and then nonmetal second. <coughs> but if I say, what about a compound of nickel and chloride? I'm leaving a little space in there because we're going to have to add something. Chloride. <clears throat> well, there's more than one compound of nickel and chloride, right? Nickel can do different things. It's right in here in the transition metal section. So I can't do what I did here. Oh, nickel is a, I don't know, plus, right? What, what is the positive charge of nickel? It can do different things. Most commonly, it's either a 2 plus or a 3 plus, but I don't know. So I, I need to do one more step when I do that. So, um, of course, nickel, I don't know. What is the charge? Chloride, we do know. It's always minus one. Uh, so what we, what we do is we put an extra thing. Well, let's say, I'm going to say, okay, in this case, under these circumstances, nickel is combined with chlorine such that nickel has a three plus charge. So we put a Roman numeral after the metal, if it's only if it's a transition, I don't do it for the other metals, but if it's a transition metal, I put in Roman numeral that says, in this case, for this compound, nickel has formed a three plus charge. So then I can say, okay, nickel is three plus, <clears throat> and then I need three chlorides. So the formula for nickel three chloride is NiCl3. Um, but another very common form of nickel is 2 plus. So nickel 2 chloride. <clears throat> In this case, nickel has formed a 2 plus ion. Chlorine, of course, consistent. I need two chlorines. So that's nickel three chloride and that's nickel two chloride. You say, well, isn't it kind of the same thing? Not at all. So the different ratios here that are how they combine give these two com compounds different properties, right? So it's not the same material. Um, and usually depending on how I react it, I'm either gonna get all nickel two chloride or I'm gonna get all nickel three chloride. There's not usually a mix of each. <clears throat> so let's try that. With a couple more. Titanium, Roman numeral four, so you only need to ro know your Roman numerals up to about seven, right? So one, two, so V is five, right? So IV would be four, and then VI six, etc. Titanium four oxide. Well, we know based on where oxygen is in the periodic table that when oxygen adds electrons, it adds two always to form two minus. Titanium, in this case, we're given that titanium has formed a four plus charge. And so titanium, right here in the periodic table, is in the tra that transition metal section. It can do different things. In this case, it's formed four, four plus. So I've got titanium with a four plus charge, oxide with a two minus. I'm gonna need two oxides for every titanium. T-I-O-2. Right, so 
Um, make sure that, and remember again, that these build up in these big lattices, gajillions of ions big, um, so that, and they build up in this ratio. For every one titanium, there are two oxides in order to make sure that this follows the rule that all compounds must be neutral. Okay, now, when we're writing the formula, notice I don't put Ti1. Um, so, but when I'm doing something There is a time, so if I'm putting the Roman numeral, what if the ion only has a one plus charge? I do need to put that Roman numeral one in here. And also notice I'm consistently surrounding them with parentheses, uh, and I'm trying to be careful as we write this that that's the, my Roman numeral, and that is um, uh, the parentheses around there. So copper one nitride, what does copper one mean? Cu plus. So even though in a formula, if there's only one of them, we don't put the one, if the charge of the, the transition metal is a one plus, we do have to put the one. Copper has a one plus charge. Nitride, based on the column it's in, has five valence electrons. It adds three valence electrons uh, to form the nitride ion and fill that outer shell. So I need three coppers, right? Single plus, single plus, single plus. That makes a total of three plus, cancels three minus. Cu3 and. Now, an important thing to remember when you're doing these is sometimes people say, oh, copper one, that means one copper, right? C-U-N. No, uh, copper one, so that does not say how many coppers. That says what is the charge of the copper ion. That's a, it's a very common mistake. They'll see the Roman numeral uh, and they'll put, so that means one copper. No, that means that is the charge of the metal. Where does this Roman numeral go? It goes after the metal, always. You don't ever put it here at the end, right? Never. Never, never, never. Copper one. So metal, if it's a transition metal only, the me name of the metal, the charge of the metal, and then the non-metal with a suffix to IDE. Okay, what if we're working the other way? Um, so of course, if I have something and it's not a transition metal and I write CAF2, uh, I don't have to go through anything. I say, oh, that's calcium fluoride, right? So I say, okay, calcium fluoride. I, I, that, and that's it, that's all I have to do. Um, but what if it's something like this, CDF2? I look up CD and I say, okay, CD is cadmium. That is a transition metal. We'll find it kind of right in here. Um, so that's a transition metal. So I said, okay, it's a transition metal. I need to put a Roman numeral. So it's cadmium. Put it, leave a space for a Roman numeral. Fluoride. Uh, how do I know the charge? Here's how we determine. So what is the charge? I've got to go through this step. I have two fluorines. I know from where they are, fluorine is on the periodic table. It always forms one minus. So what we do here is we use the non-metal to determine the charge of the metal. So cadmium, what is, whoops, that's a question mark. What is the charge of cadmium? I've got a total of two negative. I need cadmium to have a two plus charge. So I use the non-metal, the charge of the non-metal and the number of non-metals to determine the total charge. The total charge, negative charge is two minus. I need to cancel that with two plus. Therefore, if the formula is this, that is called cadmium 2 fluoride. Let's try that on another type. And let's look at this one, Ti2S3. Uh, and I see, I look up what is Ti, it's titanium again, it's, it's right there in the transition metal section, so I know it's titanium something sulfide. <clears throat> what is our step? First step, I've got three sulfide ions. I look at the periodic table and I see they're in that column with oxygen. Six valence electrons, it adds two, always. Right, so there's, there's my sulfides. 
I also look in here and I would encourage you, especially early on, to set up this little chart. I've got two titaniums. What is the charge? I don't know yet. I'm gonna find that out. Right? So I got I know I have three sulfides, two titaniums. Total it up. Two plus two plus two, that is a total of six negative. I need a total of six plus. So what charge does each titanium have to be to add up to six plus? Well, there's two of them. If each one is three plus, then that gives me um, my charge that I need, enough to cancel. What is the charge of titanium? Three plus. Where do I put that? Right here. Titanium three sulfide. And that gives me the, that compound. So we, uh, I've got another uh, Google chart that we're going to Google document that will work on practicing some of this and, and I've set up some examples. So let's practice this and we will get down, have our naming ionic compounds as part of our skills.